I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harnett in the secrets of Bluegrass Chef's Kitchen Studio. And it's about time to get cooking with another one of Kentucky's top chefs. This time, longtime Louisville chef Sean Ward is with us. He's one of the top chefs in Kentucky, a master at making delicious southern inspired cuisine. And today, he's sharing some of his best secrets with us. And Kevin, I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you the secrets to a Kentucky coffee that will warm you up. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Are you ready? We're about to get cooking. It's Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, and it starts right now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett here at our home base at Bourbon Barrel Foods in the Butchertown Market. This is all local, all positive TV made just for Kentucky, and what a show we have for you today. If you like southern food, we have you covered with Chef Sean Ward. Sean grew up in Kentucky washing dishes at Jack Fry's when he was just a teenager. Then he took off for culinary school in South Carolina and would return to become the head chef at Jack Fry's, spending 18 years there and really helping to make that restaurant what it is today. Now he's using all his culinary skills to dazzle diners at his own place, a restaurant that bears his name, Ward 426 at 426 Baxter Avenue in Louisville. We'll get cooking with Sean in just a minute, but first, won't you say hello to my broadcast partner, Tim Laird, known as America's CEO. Hello, Kevin. Hello, hello Timmy. How are you? What I'm a great cool. audience. Look at this. They are awesome. They and are And not fantastic. only are they looking from for the secrets from Sean Ward, but from the chief entertaining as officer himself. We here. have some secrets to share, and we're going to reveal them all. So I look uh, forward to that. We love, we love sharing secrets. An action-packed half hour to come. It's going to be fun. Let's do Kevin. it. All right. Thank you. Anyway, it's a great day to be in Kitchen Studio because we've got him. He's back. He's been with us many times. But here he is, the one and only, Sean Ward. <laughs> Hello, Sean. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Don, good to see you. Thank you for being here. I mean, what a history. I mean, you really were the person to make Jack Fry's what it is today. Oh. I mean, it really is. I mean, all those years, but again, like all great chefs, you want to aspire to do it for yourself and have your own That's restaurant. Right. And Ward 426 is amazing. What a great place. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Look at all this assembly. What are we going to do today, Chef? All right. Today, we're going to start out, we're going to do a uh, country ham braised octopus with a uh, pear and black bean relish. And we're going to finish it off with a uh, white miso uh, vinaigrette. Nice. That's wow. an interesting combination. Sounds I mean, delicious. Uh, yeah, it does. Absolutely. Where do we start on this? All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make we're going to make our braising liquid for the uh, for the octopus. Okay. And, and here I'm going to use uh, it's baby octopus. Okay. So uh, it's 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 will shorten the cooking time dramatically. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with just some water and some parsley stems. I can usually get the water part down. Tim. That's right. You can boil water. <laughs> <laughs> got that. It probably got, ends there for me. And we got some local country ham from right up the road, some onions and some garlic. So we got a really fragrant broth started. We're going to let this simmer. Uh, just uh, let it come up to a, a slight boil. And then with our octopus, we've got about two pounds here, which sounds like a, lo like a lot. It does sound like a lot. But after it braises down, it's gonna it, it kind of shrinks. So you need a little bit volume there More just, than it just looks. to feed. So all we're gonna do is drop the octopus into our broth and wow. let that go. It'll be about uh, 45 minutes. And you need to do that to tenderize it and yes. cook through, right? Because it's uh, pretty uh, elastic, yeah. right? Yeah, or yes. gelatinous, I guess so you could we'll say. We'll let that go for about 45 minutes. Okay. And then, um, when you can uh, put a fork through it and it's nice and tender, uh, it's finished. Wow. So it, it could vary there. It could go from 45 minutes down to 35, or it could go up to an hour. It just depends. The only problem, sh uh, Chef, is that this is only a 30-minute show. <laughs> <laughs> We're not eating today. <laughs> Sorry about that. No. No. Um, so while that's cooking, okay. uh, we're going to make, uh, make a vinaigrette, or a relish, I'm sorry. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of garlic. And that's not crushed, you just kind of diced yes. it up a little bit. And then some fresh pears. Beautiful. Is that like a Bartlett pear or what kind of, yes, it is? It is. Okay. Absolutely. And then we got a little bit of heat, a little bit of jalapeno pepper there. Nice. Mm -hmm. 
A little bit of red bell pepper. Because that'll balance kind of the sweetness of the pear that you've got in there. Absolutely. And then we got some shallot. And then we've got, this is a fermented black bean. They come dried. So what you want to do is you want to soak them in some cold water for about 15, 20 minutes. And then it kind of rehydrates them. So we're going to add a little bit of black bean. How about fermented yeah, black I'm, bean, Kevin? And it's beautiful in color, I know. too. The whole thing looks I'm delicious. used to fermenting other things. I was but thinking <laughs> you would not soak it in water if it were right. you. <laughs> and then we're going to take a little bit of oil and just toss that together. Nice. And the inspiration behind this dish? Uh, actually, uh, grilled octopus is uh, a very popular dish down, down in South Carolina, believe it or not. And uh, um, I started there, and then I wanted to put my, our own little Kentucky flair on it. Yeah. So we added a little country ham, and, uh, and we, I wanted to you know, put it, kick it up a little bit, so we added the uh, black beans. <laughs> nice. So then we're going to squeeze just a little bit of lemon juice. <laughs> And then our relish is done. Just that quickly. Nice. Absolutely. You want to let this sit, uh, let it marinate for about an hour or so if you could. All those flavors come together. Absolutely. So now we're going to take our octopus that we've already cooked. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, the magic, the magic of TV. TV, by the way. Hey, 45 <laughs> minutes later, look at this. Absolutely. <laughs> and what we've got here is we've got a little bit of olive oil, and we're going to add a little bit of bourbon smoked paprika to it. Oh, so that's going to give it a kick. Absolutely. That's a neat idea. And look at the beautiful color that renders down to. Yes. Awesome. And then we're just going to take our octopus and just kind of toss it in our oil. Hmm. Let it marinate all over. Make sure it's all covered. Yeah, just kind of let it, uh, <laughs> let the paprika kind of permeate the, the octopus. Okay. And then we're just going to gently kind of strain it off a little bit, let it, let the excess oil kind of drip off. Oh, and then you're going to grill it. That's grill. the last steps. Yeah. So it's already For, been cooked, but now we're going to uh, finish it off, marinate it, and then grill it. And give it. So for some folks that may see it on the menu and be like, ah, I don't know if I want to try that. You know, it's, it's what do you what do you say? Give it a shot because actually it's it, when we first put it on, that was the exact uh, response that we got, and now it's actually one of the more popular things that... I was, was going to say, that, that's kind of daring. I mean, when yeah, you, you got to be like, like this or go, you know, I know calamari, but I don't know about this process. <laughs> yeah. This is... But I, I, I bet once they do taste it, yeah, they love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So here we just got a white balsamic vinaigrette with some white miso. Um, we're just going to use this. If you really, you can use any vinaigrette that you would like, but we're just going to... Put a little bit of this on the plate. Kind of just a base there. To yes. So now we're just going to take our relish and kind of put it down the center of our plate. It's marinated nicely. It's like an art piece. It is. Look at this. Now, could this be an appetizer that you could share with uh, Absolutely. folks? Absolutely. That's what we, we actually we serve it as an appetizer. Okay. So uh, the octopus gets a little bit crispy, and we just take a little bit of the oil and just kind of put a little bit on the plate or on the octopus, and then just drizzle a little bit around the plate. We just position our octopus. Wow. We'll just garnish it with a little bit of ham. Give it a little Kentucky flavor. Absolutely. Mm. A little bit of salt. Mm. And just finish with a little bit of chives. And just a few more little pieces of pear. Beautiful. How's oh, that look? Awesome. I'll tell you what. That looks wow. great. There it is. Fantastic. If I'm looking for that on the menu, I look for? That's our grilled octopus with our black bean and pear relish. Very nice. The secrets to that revealed right before your eyes, but we're not finished revealing secrets. We've got more to come up Absolutely. next. Up next, we have a, uh, a, a center cut pork chop with a country ham uh, a crust on top. 
with uh, Brussels sprouts and a little bit more bacon. Ooh, wow, that's now a, you're talking my language. That sounds Kentucky proud. Yeah, <laughs> and you're whipping up a cocktail. I've got a Kentucky coffee that's going to warm you up. You're going to love it. So Don't stay tuned go for those receipts. Away. Yeah, we're coming right back at Secrets of Bluegrass Chef right here. We're back with more from Sean Ward from Ward 426. God, that looks awesome. It's the Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett here at Bourbon Barrel Foods. It's our home base for the show, and we are cooking with Sean Ward. The pork chops coming up in just a moment, but as we always do, we like to reveal the secrets to our very own cocktails as well with our chief entertaining officer and co-host Tim Laird. Tim, I see the ingredients here. I mean, we've got a little pecan, a little chocolate, some Kentucky bourbon. I'll tell Ooh, you what, this, this is, is going to be, be one kicked up coffee. And I tell you, anyway, it is Kentucky coffee. I like that because, you know what, we, we do have a lot of cocktails on the show, but we haven't really done any some, something with like a coffee drink or something you could have right. after dinner or uh, just any time of the day. Maybe a little winter warmer if you want. But, yeah. Uh, or Sounds any time good. of the year. Yeah. So it starts out, the Kentucky coffee uh, has to start out with a little Kentucky bourbon, of course. I so, would say. Uh, we put a little bit of uh, Woodford Reserve in. And you know what? You can just guess at this. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things. If you like a little more bourbon, Kevin, <laughs> you can kick that up a little bit more. It's like the or so. You right. Know? Yeah. Exactly. It's and then I put a little chocolate liqueur in there. Oh, that wow. is really good. You can just good. fill it so, the rest of the way up with and, that for me. And if you think about it, uh, it, chocolate and bourbon go together very nicely. And then we have a local, it is Kentucky, this uh, Rivulet, which is a pecan liqueur that's made uh, here as well. And that smells oh, unbelievable. Just like the pecan. Let's see if this I, is like a pecan pie in a glass. Oh my gosh, it is. And uh, I, well, I did leave room for coffee at first. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm like, that's you all know. alcohol, you know? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to top this off a little bit of uh, uh, nice, uh, as you see, the coffee freshly brewed. There it goes in like that. Now, listen, you could top this off with a little whipped cream yeah. if you want. That would be a nice little topper to this. Throw a candy anyway, cane in it. Throw a candy <laughs> cane in it. Yeah, whatever you want, Kevin. Let's see how we did. Now, sip lightly. It's maybe a little warm, but I think with the spirits in there. It smells good. Wow, is that good? It is good. <laughs> it is good. You, yeah, you're, a, you're a miracle worker. You've just made uh, coffee taste good. You know, finally. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this will get me up in the morning. <laughs> what? I can't wait for coffee time. Uh. <laughs> right? The best part is they didn't have to measure a thing. It was just like, yeah, with that. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, throw it in yeah, there. Yeah, just load it up with that. That's, that is good. Is it good? Very good. <laughs> good. Well, awesome. Right, Kevin. What I do you say we cook? Let's do it. Let's do a little bit of that. We've got all a pork right. chop over here waiting to jump in the skillet. Look at this, Sean. This looks unbelievable. Look at this chop. <laughs> Whew. It's a nice pork chop. We're going to do a, a center cut pork chop. And actually, uh, I'm going to use asparagus okay. today. And uh, we're going to put it on a potato, shiitake mushroom, and bacon hash. Ooh. Ooh, and nice. the thing about this pork chop is we are gonna uh, we're gonna cook it in the oven and roast it, and then we're gonna put a uh, country ham, uh, herb compound butter on top, uh, and add a little bit of breadcrumbs so that it'll crust on top. All right, how do we start? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little bit of oil in the pan, and obviously it is a big chop, so we want to get it going first. So all we do is season our pork chop, a little bit of pepper. Oh yeah, and a little bit of salt. Some people get intimidated by pork. Uh, pork is actually very forgiving, um, and this is actually an heirloom hog, uh, which means that it's going to have um, a little bit more fat content than a normal pork chop, but uh, it's going to have a lot more flavor. But I think where people get intimidated because they're used to uh, having it overcooked, you know, like at home. Yeah. Because they're worried about it being undercooked, so they just they they go overboard. The fire out but of. now with the process today, they actually the, even the pork producers and the FDA has lowered the temperature of Absolutely. what it has to be, right? Absolutely, and we like to serve ours a uh, little on the medium side. Perfect. So you got a nice little pink in the middle, gives you a really nice juicy chop. Mm. And, and with it being an heirloom hog, it's the flavor is just it's just amazing. Wow, that's great. And it looks, I mean, it looks phenomenal. This is That's just, huge. I know it is. So we're just going to sear it, and then we're going to go ahead and throw it in a, in a preheated oven. That sear is what gave it that crust on there, which is nice with that hot pan, hot absolutely, oil. Absolutely, absolutely. So now we're just going to, uh, well, actually, you know what? We should probably start uh, 
I'm making our, uh, our compote first. So we just put a little bit of oil in the pan and a little bit of bacon. Mmm, very good. That'll flavor that pan. Absolutely. And our onions. Oh, stand back, Tim. I <laughs> uh, wouldn't want you to catch no. on fire again. Keep the Woodford away from that fire. I'm <laughs> sure the drink's over here, Kevin. <laughs> okay, and what I have here is some garlic that's already been blanched. God, this smells good. Can you guys <laughs> get a little smell of that? So we have bacon and onion and garlic. Just gonna let that saute for a little bit. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of sugar. Kind of sweeten it up a little bit. Caramel, you know, it also caramelizes that yes. a little more too. And then we got some fingerling potatoes. So many Kentucky Proud items, I see. Oh, absolutely. As many as you can possibly get. Because as far as local goes, and that's what's great about it. You can source year-round different products. Of course, the meat products uh, always, and then a lot of the uh, vegetables and everything. Absolutely. Well, while this cooks, I think we're going to uh, take a quick break, Kevin. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to come back in just a moment. We'll finish up the chop. We've got all you need to know with the secrets from Chef Sean Ward from Ward 426. You're watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Hope you're enjoying the show. We are cooking here with Sean Ward. Uh, among just the top chefs and a great friend of the show, uh, has been for many years. Uh, Sean, we appreciate you jumping back in and Thank you, sharing Rich. your secrets always. And by the way, Sean, just to remind everybody, what do we have in the pan? Okay, we have our, our pork chop hash, but we have our family potatoes, our bacon, shiitake mushrooms, asparagus. Oh. I'm going to add a little bit of stock to this. Okay. Just a little bit of chicken stock. And we're going to let that simmer. That and then looks, we're also going to check and make sure everything's seasoned properly. And then we're going to add just a little bit more butter and just let that simmer for a minute. <laughs> I like that. It's about like mm -hmm. Tim's pour. Yeah, yeah it just is. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> and then we're going to take our, uh, we're going to make our compound butter real quick. So we got some softened butter. We're going to add some shallots, some chives, some parsley, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt. Touch of cayenne, mm. just a little bit of olive oil, and a touch of smoked paprika. And then we're just going to mix this up, and then we're going to roll it into a uh, piece of parchment so, and put it in the refrigerator so it gets cold and gets hard. And, uh, and, and then it's already flavored. And that's the I final mean, you have result. The, the flavored compound butter, and you can freeze this too, right? Absolutely. And, and it'll, keep it for a while. It'll last, and it goes really good with fish, chicken. Steaks, I mean, anything you want to put it on. Mm. Perfect. All right, Sean, so how's the pork chop doing? We have it in the oven. It's Absolutely. I think we're just about finished. All right. So what we do is start to plate it up. All so right. we'll, put, uh, we'll put our uh, our hash on the bottom of the plate. Oh, look at that. A lot of flavor. That sauce is reduced a l uh, quite a bit. So, wow. That is packed with flavor. That is like jam-packed. The flavor. mushrooms. Tim, I know those are your favorite. I love mushrooms. Love mushrooms. All of them. Morel's my favorite, though. Right. I do have a favorite mushroom. Awesome. Do you like my, uh, morels? Absolutely. Let me just put a little bit of au jus on the plate. Beautiful. All right. And, and now's now. the time for the crowning moment, Tim. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. Fanfare, please. Fanfare. Here it is. Oh, right. Look at this. Top. Look at that. That butter, that compound butter wow. has now melted down. And we just set this kind of... Off to the side. Oh, wow. Talk about a meal. <laughs> that looks delicious. Look at this. Huge. That's, see, again, I think that's where people don't understand what, how great these pork chops can be. It used to be those little leathery. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, you'd like barely be able to struggle to oh, rip yeah. it apart. There we go. Let me just put a little herbs on top. Beautiful. And there and you have there it. There we have it. That is absolutely fabulous. Oh. Sean, quickly, uh, tell us when we can come see you, your hours of uh, Ward 426. Well, we're open for dinner uh, seven days a week, uh, Mon and uh, Monday through Thursday, we're open until 10. Uh, Friday and Saturday, we're open until 11. 
and on Sunday we're open to about 9:30. Wow, do you still have happy hour specials? Absolutely, every day. Uh, we'll have we also have uh, not only have uh, drink specials, but we also have uh, food specials every day, Monday through Thursday. That's special. That is special. Do you all have a good time? Yeah. The best part's yet to come. You're going to get a chance to take a taste from Sean Ward, and you can too by being a member of our studio audience. To do that, just simply go to midjulieptours.com. You'll find the information there. We're going to wrap it up by saying thanks to Sean Ward. Appreciate you being here Thank today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Good to see, Good you, to see again. you again. Always a pleasure. Revealing his secrets, and a big thanks to Tim Laird as well for revealing the secrets to that Kentucky coffee. That was delicious. <laughs> it was very delicious. We're going to see you next time. I'm Kevin Harnett for Tim and all of us at BMB Productions. We'll See you on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Oh my God, that thing was unbelievable. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, oh.